We know a lot about Miss Towers and her mother because um, they kept so much um, of their own stuff, sort of their own mini archive. They're a bit, they were hoarders, <laughs> really. So we get a sense of who they were from the mass collection that we've got here, from letters to receipts um, to jewellery that you can see in front of me, to just everyday bits and pieces. Um, so from there, we can kind of piece together what their life would have been like and who they would have been. Buttons and candle wax and many playing cards to, um, to things that she wore as well. They move into the tenement house in 1911. Miss Tyrod is a shorthand typist for a shipping company and her mother is a dressmaker. And at this point, she's running two shops, um, one on St. Vincent Street and one on Allison Street. And so we know that they were busy women, that they were working women. Um, they were quite social women as well, um, had lots of friends and family. We've got um, letters um, from lots of friends all over the world. Um, so you do get that sense that they were, you know, quite friendly, quite sociable, happy working women in Glasgow. They were very much working middle class ladies. One of them's running a business to earn their own money and be more independent as a um, single woman. A lot of the furniture we've got up the stairs, some, um, you've got clocks dating back to the 18th century, you've got um, 18th century writing desk, china and things like that that kind of show off their sort of middle class um, upbringing and shows that they're trying to be part of that middle class Victorian lifestyle um, of showing off. The, the Wally Dugs, I would say, are quite um, iconic of middle class Victorian um, lifestyle. Um, but at the same time, showing that sort of moment in Victorian history and industrial history where things are becoming more mass produced. Um, so things are easier to get hold of and trends can come and go. And most people, you know, when they come in, they see the Wally Dogs on the fireplace, you know, they recognise that their grandparents had it, you know, sort of that growth of the middle class in Glasgow at this um, period of time. There was these tokens from the Glasgow Corporation trams. Um, so again, Glasgow during the Victorian period is becoming sort of a hive of activity. Um, it's growing, population is booming. You've got movements of um, art and culture and people are being more connected across the city sort of more than ever. I think given that sense of how much Glasgow was growing and how much technology was advancing at the time as well. And it's such a small piece of history, I guess. People from all over the world come in and they can connect with it immediately. We've been quite careful not putting up do not touch signs and roping things off because we wanted to give that impression that, you know, Miss Tower's just popped out to the shop for five minutes and she's, you know, due to come back at any moment and you've got the smells from the gas lights and um, the sound of the ticking clock, it very much feels alive, moving um, in time. 1960, um, Miss Towers eventually gives in and uh, has electricity put in. And then when the Trust acquired the property in 1982, they put the gas lights back in. It's one of the first things people notice as they come over the threshold is that immediate smell that, you know, to us, it's it's not unfamiliar, but you immediately think, oh gosh, that's, you know, it's unsafe. <laughs> like, um, people kind of look around initially thinking, where's that smell coming from? But the gas lights, um, you know, they give off this, um, this smell, so you immediately got those senses and um, the levels of light as well. It's got a nice soft glow to it. It's a lot nicer than the sort of harsh lights that we have, um, the electric lights that we have today. And it gives you a sense of um, going back in time, what, what it would have been like, you're hearing the clocks, you're hearing the fireplace, um, sort of all round immersive experience of being in someone's home. This year, to celebrate our 40th birthday and sort of bring an end to the project that we started pre-COVID, <laughs> um, we're going to be opening a tea room um, in one of our spaces and we're also going to be running um, daily archive sessions. So giving visitors a chance to come in, um, have a look at some of the hidden things we have in here, things that we don't usually get to show people. Um, and all the sort of different types of stories and histories we have from World War II collections to how Glasgow changed over the years, even down to makeup, fashion and pop culture. Um, so it's something for everyone really <laughs> and a chance to get a better idea of um, the towers and um, who they were. We also have changing exhibition spaces as well, so anytime you come back um, there'll be something brand new for you to see. <laughs>